my name is Frederick Harper. You can call me Fred. I'm a director of developer relations at MindBee. And uh, as uh, Inessa said, I'm going to talk about mental health. Uh, during the talk or after, if you watch the recording, feel free to connect with me on Twitter, to share a screenshot, to uh, share quotes of good or bad things I've said, it, either if you agree or disagree. Uh, I'm always looking to get some feedback and continue the discussion on other media, but I spend way too many times on Twitter, so it's probably the best place to uh, reach out to me. So I'm Hef Harper on Twitter. And on that note, uh, I wanna start with uh, basically a warning. First warning, uh, if that talk, that talk is not, it's not an easy topic. Uh, so if there is something that triggers you, uh, if there's something that you don't feel comfortable with, if you, if you just don't feel well when you listen uh, to me talking about mental health and, and some neurodiversity, uh, please, please, please uh, just stop watching the video, the recording, or just quit uh, the Zoom meeting. I won't, uh, I won't have any hard feelings about that. It's totally understandable. Second warning, I am I'm not a health professional. I am not a doctor. I am not a shrink. A I'm not a professional. So everything that I'm saying tonight is based on my own experience. It's based on the knowledge that I acquire with my own struggle, reading different topic, but it won't replace what a professional can tell you. Uh, so take what makes sense, leave what you think does not make sense. So I just want to be clear, I'm not a health professional. <laughs> so now that we're done with the warning, let's jump in the topic. And uh, I know uh, the audience is uh, developer or software developer, people working in tech. And uh, this presentation is not tech related at all in the sense that like, I'm gonna talk about mental health overall. So I was like, I need to have some geeky stuff in my presentation. So this is the only slides uh, with the title that is related to software development at some point. So tonight it's really, a mix of me sharing about my experience with my own uh, mental uh, health issues, my mental disorders, and my neurodivergence. So the idea is not just because I like to talk about myself, it's really because I've been through a couple of things and I really want to demystify some of those issues. I want people to start to be slowly a little more comfortable with those topics. So I'm gonna talk about a lot of things, uh, going from, you know, the usual suspect to discussion that you don't have every day. But the idea is really, I want us to try to make those topics less taboo, because even in places where it's still, uh, <clears throat> sorry, acceptable, or it's still easier to talk about those topics, certain words, certain topics are still taboo, and they should not be. Uh, so, I understand everybody is in their own journey with mental health in those different terms, but the more we talk about them, uh, the more chances that if we need help at some point, it's going to be easier to reach out to someone or someone's going to be more open to listen to us, or we're just going to be more open to talk to other people about that. So tonight, my goal is really to try to start a discussion with the people listening and uh, hopefully, again, to try to make uh, different topics about mental health, less taboo. So I have a couple of stats, uh, mostly about the US. So uh, one of the stats that I found was one in four adults experience mental illness every year, and one in 17 lives uh, lives with a serious mental illness, which for me, and I really hope, uh, I didn't read the code of conduct, so I really hope that the next slide won't, won't, won't be an issue. But for me, it's just like, it's just mind blowing. It's, it's really like, what the fuck? Like there is so many people with mental health issues and we don't even know about that. It's just like, why? What, like so many people have struggled with mental health in different capacity. And it's just like, it, it was mind blowing to me and, and unfortunately not in a good sense. So it means that, there are a lot of people out there that struggle with different mental health issues. Uh, some a little more intense, some it may be just like uh, small things day to day, but it doesn't mean that it's not something that is waiting on the people. So the thing though, is that mental illness isn't always visible. Uh, you know, you seem to do well, uh, you're working, uh, you having friends, you do things with friends, uh, you smile when you when when someone asks you how are you, 
you said like, I'm fine. Uh, but maybe deep down or when you go back home or where you're alone during the evening, you're going to have some anxious thoughts. You're going to, you're going to cry. You're just going to feel bad. So some people, for some people, that's going to be visible for other people like me. Uh, I'm going to be really vocal about this. And I want to ensure that uh, it doesn't make me a better person because I'm vocal about this. I'm just someone who, who my friends say that I overshare overall. I like to talk and I reach a point in my process of trying to get better with different of those issues. Uh, that for me, it's kind of like there's a part of it that is therapeutic to share about those topics, but also uh, it's, it's just also part of my personality and part of what I do for work. I like to talk. I like to share my passion about different topics. And uh, I know it may sound weird, but I'm passionate about mental illness because I live with a couple of those. But also, again, I want to be sure that uh, we can talk as much as possible and as freely as possible with those topics. So the thing is that this is why those numbers were kind of like crazy number for me because one out of four people, like I don't think I know one out of four people that have mental illness, but the thing is that I don't know who have mental illness because it's not always visible. So <clears throat> let me share a little bit about my experience and, and a little bit about my story. So uh, a, good, a good prospect here, uh, ADHD. So it's, uh, it's a neurodiversity, it's attention deficit disorder, and I actually attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And uh, this is basically my mind most of the time. And we could argue that like, you know, it's a problem of, of the century because like all kids get diagnosed with ADHD. But the thing is that ADHD is also really well, it, it's really not well known. Uh, so ADHD is basically, it's characterized by a persistent pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity slash impulsivity that interfere with functioning or development. And that is the important part. It's persistent and that interfere with functioning or development. Lucky me, I have the inattention, the hyperactivity, the impulsivity all together. So that's really nice. But when I think about ADHD, I see this as a spectrum. So... One of the things I heard quite often is like, oh yeah, yeah, I have ADHD too because I forget my keys once in a while. And the truth is that, yeah, okay, it's part of uh, having an attention deficit disorder with or without hyperactivity. But the thing is that it's not just the trouble focusing, it's not just the fidgeting, it's not just about forgetting my keys. There is a lot more to ADHD. So there is that thing that I call the ADHD, ADHD iceberg, I did not create it, but I want to update it for a while and I still didn't do it because there is a lot more either uh, issues that happen with ADHD, but also comorbidity. So uh, most people with ADHD will get depressed and some point will we'll have depression because we spend our life to try to live in a society that expect, that expect us to be, uh, to not be neurodivergent. They expect, they expect us to be quote unquote normal. And uh, I spent all my life trying to find coping mechanism without like consciously or unconsciously to just try to keep up with the rest of the world and try to keep up with the expectations. So ADHD caused me issue. Uh, I, I lost job because of that. I had issue with my relationship. Uh, I had issue with all volunteering because, uh, you know, it's, it's the attention uh, problem. It's the uh, memory problem, which means that I have a really good memory, but not about a lot of things. And I have issue with short-term memory, but this is also, uh, you know, the rejection sensitivity, sensitivity disorder. Also that makes my life not so easy, especially when you're trying to date people and, you know, dating is being rejected most of the time until you find the right person. So it makes my life uh, a little bit, uh, I don't know how to say that politely, but that really makes my life difficult. So sad about ADHD, there's also way more people than we think. Uh, usually ADHD is diagnosed when you're a children, when you're a kid. Uh, for me, it was not the case. I was diagnosed, actually, I don't even remember, like 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, but the thing is that it was not a surprise to absolutely anyone, uh, even myself, that was just like, okay, you just confirm what I know and what everybody in my entourage known. But the thing, it was for me just a, a kind of like a blessing. Uh, I know some people feel really bad about being diagnosed, but for me, that was kind of a blessing because that 
that was explaining a lot of issues in my life was explained by the fact that like, no, yeah, someone, a professional diagnosed me with ADHD. But outside of the kids, there is a lot of adults that are not diagnosed and that have big tendency uh, with ADD or ADHD. And there is 5% of the adult population in the US who have ADHD. So obviously we can argue that the society, that the rhythm that we're living your life right now, that like the, just the way that the world is right now uh, with social media and, and like, like specifically places like, like, you know, Twitter, when you, you do the scrolling of doom, because you always try to look for something or TikTok that you, you're not even finished with one video. There's the next one, like everything is taking your attention because it's good for business. So you could argue that it doesn't help with attention, but it's still way more than just that. There is a dysfunction in the brain where uh, you get less of some hormone, like hormones like the uh, pleasure one, where if I do something that I enjoy, I get less pleasure than other people. And if I want to do something that I don't enjoy, it takes me way more uh, energy. It takes me way more, uh, like I really need to want to do that. And even that it's, it's really complicated. And a really interesting exam, example that sounds stupid is uh, brushing your teeth. It's, it's two minutes. Like you need to brush your teeth for at least two minutes. This is the, this is the room. Uh, and it is really not complicated. Like, I don't know how old the average, of, like the average of like uh, the age in the room, but uh, you know, we are doing this for at least 20, 30, 40 years. And the thing is that it's so simple. But for me, brushing my teeth two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening, or actually before going to bed is literally the end of the world. It's really, really hard for me because that's one of the most boring tasks ever for me doing that that asked me a lot of brain power to do that but i ensure you i've brushed my teeth but it's a question of like like in the morning i insert that in my morning routine and even while brushing my teeth in the morning what i do is that how how I, like I open the windows and i i, I put the food on the, the cats while brushing my teeth so i do something else to basically not focus on the really boring task of brushing my teeth. So that's just one example of something that is simple that even kids do uh, actually when they're forced because they don't like it. I assume uh, we have this in common, uh, me and, and the small kids. The second thing that I wanted to talk about is depression, but also I want to talk about major depressive disorder. And I want to talk about persistent depressive, persistent depressive disorder and the big bad wolf societal talks or dark, dark thoughts. So depression is basically you're, you're not happy with yourself. And uh, it's, it's how I live uh, for a long time. So if we, it's really like you want to get out of yourself because you're just not happy. Life does not, life is not enjoyable. Life is not happy. Even the things you used to like, you may not like them depending on like which stage you are. So if I go back to, to like a pure definition, depression is a temporary mild episode of sadness caused by a lust or a medical condition. We all had depression at some point in the, uh, the definition that is there. Like you lost someone uh, to like a, a health condition, someone close to you passed away, uh, or broke up, like you, your relationship just, your relationship just handed, uh, you're gonna be depressed. It's, 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 you're sad, you're really sad, but it's milk and it's in a type of like, it, it's during a time frame. So that's gonna be a couple of days, maybe one or two weeks, maybe one month you're gonna be depressed, but after you're gonna start to like feel a little bit better. But there is something I'll call, call a ma major depressive disorder, which is characterized, characterized by at least two weeks of pervasive low mood, low self-esteem, and loss of interest or pleasure in normally enjoyable activities. So even the things you like to do, they don't give you any joy at that point. And I hit the wall in 2015 after a really hard breakup where obviously I was depressed, but that depression, the, the feeling of being depressed stayed for more than two weeks and was really preventing me to do anything else. So during that time, 
during that time, I basically, thanks for Netflix, I basically spent most of my time with Netflix and eating food. Some people will just like do nothing or again, watch TV because like that, that's the brain, you, you can't turn your brain off. You don't think about the things that make you sad, that make you depressed when you do that. And some people won't eat, some people will hate, but, but for, I don't remember exactly, probably seven to eight months, what I've done with my life is watching Netflix and eating junk food. So obviously that was not really good, but someone like me was like, I'm, I'm super social, I'm an extrovert. Uh, I love to meet people, I, I love my friends. It's really important for me. I did not even want to see my friends. Uh, even the people that I was super close to, I did not want to because that was not even enjoyable for me to meet those people that I, I deeply love. But at that time I was so depressed that it was not even something interesting to me. Actually, that was like a big chore to like when a friend forced me to like just do something with them. Uh, they did well though, <laughs> but uh, it was just like too much. And there is some other state where it's called persistent depressive disorder, which is a point for me in my life where you know, I stopped being in my major depressive disorder and I started to feel a little bit better but I'm not happy. So it's referred to low mood that has last, last for at least two years, but may not reach the intensity of measured depression. So many people, and it, this is interesting, that part is that quote unquote interesting, is that many people are able to work, to function day to day, but feel low or joyless most of the time, which is the states, the exciting state that I am uh, day to day, which means that I'm giving talk right now, I'm able to do my work, uh, I'm gonna go out with friends and have fun. But uh, you know, when I'm alone at home, it's, it's a little bit more sad. I, I, I don't feel good. I don't feel uh, as good as I used to before the depression. And it's a state that kind of like follow you all the time. It's not super interesting. But the thing is that depression is not just about the mood because your brain is like, okay, life is not good, life is shit. And you don't enjoy the things and you don't like the things. It starts to affect also your, your, your physical, physical aspect of you. So uh, you can have poor concentration, which for me was not a big change because of ADHD, but loss of joy or pleasure, again, to the things you like to do. Uh, you're going to be tired all the time and, and not just tired. Sometimes it's really it's fatigue. So it's really hard for you to do just basic stuff because you're just like your energy is just drained. Even if you do nothing, uh, you're going to start to withdraw from friends and family. You're going to start to be uh, irritable. You're going to have trouble sleeping, which is like really bad because you're depressed. A good thing is to be able to sleep, but you're going to have trouble to sleep. Uh, you're going to gain your weight loss, which is usually a given when you're depressed. It's usually one or the other. Either you stop to eat or you eat really, really bad food because you try to do uh, emotion regulation with food. <clears throat> you're going to have a headache, muscle headache, uh, upset stomach, which which often is the case. And you may also even have suicidal thoughts, which will happen a little more often when you get in major uh, depressive disorder. So when we talk about depression, it's not just a, a one thing, it's not just a couple of people, there's 17.7 million annual number of Americans who experience depression. So there is annually 17.7 million. American, and it's just America. So we're not even talking about other countries. And the people that hit the wall at some point, uh, there is 50% chance that they're gonna stumble into another major depression uh, period. And uh, it, it goes to any like different type of, of people, no matter what's your background, no matter if you're successful or not in life, uh, no matter your age though. And uh, I volunteer uh, uh, three or four years ago in the suicidal outline where, <coughs> sorry about that, suicidal outline uh, where we were receiving calls for people who had suicidal thoughts or uh, people that were close to someone who had suicidal thoughts or, or tried to, to, to kill themselves or even uh, people that were grieving because someone commits suicide. And we had adult we had uh, really like older people and we also got kids. And, and, and especially with what happened recently in the US, you can understand that like even a kid that should just be happy and, and play with their friends live in a world right now where 
unfortunately they can get depressed so it's not just an adult thing right now uh it's it's basically everyone unfortunately to, who have depression period in their life but sometimes it's going to be like major depression a little more which brings me to suicide which is that like the biggest or the hardest part of that presentation i still think it's super important to think about that because just that word scared the shit out of most people like talking about suicide it's a big word it's bold it's frightening and it is and it is i cannot blame anyone to try to avoid those kind of discussion but again i think it's really important to talk about those because we want to be able to talk freely about that because if we're more open about that word if it scares us just a little less maybe a friend of us of a coworker will have the courage to come talk to you if they don't feel like that or maybe you yourself if you are in a period where you don't feel good you may have the courage to go talk to someone because you know that maybe that person is going to be just a little more open talking about those kind of topics even if it's not difficult and you know societal thoughts it's it's really just it's 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 two things it's just like really you want to end your life because that's just going to be it's the easier thing to do it's the easier thing to do it's 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 quote unquote easy but actually it seems to you that it's the easier thing to do or you do this because you just can you just can't anymore it, or it doesn't make sense or you don't think that there is reason for you to be here and it's really not easy for me that happened i had societal thoughts uh i was i was lucky or or unlucky that uh i went for drinks with friends which is not usually a good thing to do when you have uh when you're depressed because alcohol is is a uh, it really doesn't help. it's uh i'm looking for the word in english but like it's a uh, depressive it's like it it doesn't help with depression actually uh it puts you down it it makes you sad and uh and you see it like if you drink too much alcohol even if you feel happy you may feel a little bit sadder when you when you're a little bit drunk or tipsy and uh i went for drinks with friends and when i came back home um you know i wrote on facebook something that uh my friends were were just scared that i was going going to commit the act and just end my life and uh i was when i said i was lucky i was lucky enough that i was so drunk that i felt asleep and i don't know if i was going to do something or no because i to be honest i don't totally remember uh and in the morning uh like someone was knocking on my door and it was a cops and i was coming at my place to see if i was still alive and that is not a feeling you you want to have that is not an experience you want to have and for me that was kind of like the wake up call to 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 kind of like do something a little better to try to get more help to really try to get through it because i was like that 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 doesn't make sense like like cops someone call the cops a friend to come to my house to see if i was okay if i was still alive that's that's crazy for me that was like okay no that 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 it went too far i need to try to get some help and be a little bit better so <laughs> the thing is that uh when i was volunteering uh if if i go back to like like generic societal thoughts when i was volunteering we had a a piece of paper where we were writing some information about like the person uh calling uh who had societal thoughts or a friend or colleague of someone who had societal thoughts to try to evaluate the the importance or quote unquote the urgency of the situation and uh what you need to keep in mind is that uh it's a little less scary when there is no details about there is no planning around societal thoughts but i would say one thing always believe someone when they tell you that like it's the end they want to end your, their life or they they're done with that life so someone's going to say like i don't want to live anymore uh, i don't deserve to be on this planet uh people would be happier if i would not exist uh one day i'll be done with all that shit uh i have no more reason to stay alive so those one when it when it comes to like trying to rate like the, the urgency of that they may be a little less urgent in terms of like there is no planning around this but if someone give you tell you something like that even if it sounds a little bit generic even if you're just like oh it's just a mood like tomorrow you're going to be good uh, like believe those people and try to understand what's happening try to 
talk to those people, try to refer them to uh, the, the, the right resources uh, because you never know what's going to happen. But when you really need to, I was going to say freak out, it's not exactly freak out, but when you really need to take it to the next step, the next step where uh, in any occasion, it's good to call either uh, a societal uh, helpline, hotline, uh, but in the case where there is some more planning to the idea of societal thoughts, I would say don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to call 911 or whatever the number is to call the police if you're afraid that someone will take their life. So it can be I will jump off of the bridge next to my place tomorrow. Like you cannot have a clearer plan. The person know how they're gonna handle their life. They know where and they have a when. This is a time to like take it just one notch in terms of like seriousness of that and take action immediately because yes, they said tomorrow, but maybe they're gonna walk past that bridge today and they're like, hey, why wait tomorrow? So it's a time where like, it's, it's like cops are there for that reason. And uh, it's, it's a good time to call them. Uh, I just bought a gun. I'll show her what she has done to me at her party. Uh, probably a, br a breakup. Like those things are important to keep in mind. I have a knife on my bedside table for when I'll be ready. So there is no when, but there is a how. And uh, there is kind of like a where, you know, it's, it's not clear if it's gonna be in the bedroom or not, but like there is, there is that kind of information where you need, to, you need to always like keep your ears open and be sure that you're gonna be able to help that person or find the right person. If you're not able to help that person, find the right person is gonna be able to help them. Pills overdose will be the less painful. Uh, if if you don't come back to me soon, I'll hang myself. So all those things, not really nice when someone tells you that because most of the time you just don't know what to do. What I suggest you to do is really to call a hotline, try to get the information. If the person has like more planning to their idea, don't leave the person alone. Uh, maybe you can try to call the hotline with the person or you can try to mandate someone else another friend a colleague a spouse to call like the the police or the cops for you and you stay with the person during that time um, so that's really important another thing i want to talk about and now we are going back to something that is a little less intense uh it's uh, generalized anxiety disorder so that's another cool things that i'm living with uh it's it's a comorbidity with uh basically uh depression so in my case i've never been anxious until i got a major depression and i started to experience something that i was like what the hell is that i've never experienced that now every day i woke up and i wake up and i have like a, a small ball in my chest that is like just you know there, stressing getting anxious about i have no idea what most of the time so it's, it's really like that comics. It's really like how all of a sudden this thing called life happens to me and now I've got to deal with it. And you know, it's really coming anxiety. Uh, it's actually general anxiety look. So everybody can get anxious, but when we think about general anxiety disorder, it's characterized by persistent and excessive anxiety and worry far out of proportion to the actual likelihood of impact or the anticipated events occurring more days than not for at least six months. So this is how, this is part of how you get diagnosed with all those like keyword that I highlighted with the, with the bolder color. So everybody get anxious at some point, which is basically like, you know, worrying about things that may or may not happen. But the thing is that if, if you feel like that most of the time, and it's really excessive, this is where it kind of like hurts uh, a little more. And the thing with that, is that it's it's part of her brain did not evolve that much like her, her, her body the way we do things evolve a lot but there is part of her brain that did not evolve and it is a response of your body to the uh fight or flight uh i'm looking for the word now i have been fired but like the fight or flight situation where you know uh when you when we were caveman caveman cave woman uh there is a tiger or a bear running like to warn you, like you better not stay there. Like, so your buddy, what's, what your buddy is going to do is that your heart's going to start to pump way faster because you may have to run. Uh, 
other part of your body will shut down because yeah, it's not the time to go to the toilet. Like you need to run, you need to get away. Your life is in danger. And all those things that your body will do when you're anxious, your body is basically telling you, your brain is basically telling your body, I'm in danger. Like something terrible is going to happen. I'm going to die. Not literally, but this is how your brain is thinking. It's like if you have a tiger running toward you, and this is basically your body, your body responding to that. And for me, at one point, now I'm a little bit better. I'm on medication. That really helps. But at one point, at one point I did a panic attack. And when I did that panic attack, the thing is that between a panic attack or anxiety attack and a heart attack, the same tones are nearly the same. So I'm not small. I'm fat. I have high blood pressure. I thought I was dying. So I call an ambulance and uh, they, they came get me. And I was like, my God, I'm dying. I'm having a heart attack. And that was not. But all the same tones were pointing toward a heart attack, which is really terrible because you don't know it's not a heart attack. So you're really thinking that you're dying, but in the end, you're really not. Your body think that your body think that you are, your brain think that you are, but it's just for whatever reasons. I didn't even know what trigger. I tried to think about it. Now I have some pointer, but like on the moment, I had no idea what triggered that 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 panic attack. And trust me, I was sweating, my heart was pumping. Uh, my, my shoulder were hurting like hell. Uh, I, I started to like have a fuzzy vision. And again, I was sweating like, like my, my life was like ending or whatever. I was running a marathon, which I assume you sweat a lot. <clears throat> so uh, anxiety and, and, and panic attack, you know, you, as I said, you feel nervous, restless or tense. Uh, you have a sense of impeding danger, panic or doom, which is basically what I was saying with the fight or flight. Uh, situation reaction, having an increased heart rate, uh, breathing rapidly. So there is a lot of symptoms. I'm not going to read them all, uh, but there is a lot of things that you feel physically and also mentally where it's like, okay, it's anxiety. But when you reach a point where it's a panic attack is that all those things just go to the next level. And again, it's really hard to know. And, and maybe there is a trick. I don't know about it. I, I tried to read and I know there is a difference, but in the moment, let, let's be honest, it's not the thing you think about. Like, you're not like, oh, okay, am I having a heart attack or a panic attack? No, I'm just dying. This is how you feel. And this is quite common. There's a lot of people that got anxiety. And when I say anxiety, it's really like not, oh, I'm a little bit anxious about something once in a while. It's like living with anxiety day to day. There is 18.1% of adults in the US that have anxiety. And I'm would argue, and I'm not a scientist, it's based on absolutely nothing than just my impression, but I would argue that's probably a lot more people than that. They're just not aware that it's anxiety or they're just not comfortable to talk about that with a health professional. So anxiety, it's there. Uh, it's, it's, it's 40 million people who are anxious. And trust me, when it's, it's, it's intense enough, it's really causing you issue in your life because working is hard meeting people is hard because you always feel that that dreading feeling and always that yeah anxiety <laughs> so enough talking about me i know i did it for the last uh, couple of minutes it's i like to talk about myself i guess but how can you help yourself if you're in one of those situations or any other situation when it comes to mental health or how to help others so the first thing i would say is that Think about yourself first, which may sound uh, egoistic, which may sound egocentric, but if you're not in a good state, if your mental health is not okay, there is no way for you to probably, properly help other people. So it, it is the time to be, to think about yourself. So this is the sign you're looking for. If you're in a state right now, if you're in a mental state where it's not going super well, Try to think about yourself. Try to take care about yourself. Self-care isn't selfish. Like even if I said like it may look like it's, it's, it's an egoistic move. It may uh, look like you're self-centered. But the thing, again, and I, I want to be super clear about that. If you're not in a state of mind, in a good state of mind, you cannot help other people. Or you think you can, but you may maybe 
do more damage than good. So think about yourself first. Try to be in the states where you're going to be able to help yourself, but help other people. The first thing I would say, like, if you have anxiety, you're depressed, whatever is happening, call a friend. Call a friend or a family member. Call someone with whom you're confident you can basically say everything. And even if you're not feeling comfortable to say something, just call a friend. Hey, how is life? It's been a while. Uh, how's your kid? Whatever. Talk about something you both share, something you're both passionate about. Even if it's not to talk about your mental health, obviously that would be better if you can talk about your mental health. But if you're not there in your journey with your mental health, if you're not comfortable to do that, just call a friend. You know, just talking with someone you love can do wonders. <laughs> if 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 you can, if you can get out of your place, if you don't have like social anxiety or you're not depressed and, and, and you're able to physically and mentally go out, even better than calling a friend, go meet your friends, go do something with your friends or just go sit down and hug your friend. You know what? Hugging people is underrated. Uh, it's It, it gives you a lot of benefits. It gives you great, great, a great feeling. Even if you don't think you feel it, trust me, your brain know it. It's, it's touching the people appropriately, like giving a hug to someone that you're close to, that the person approve of that hug, obviously. Uh, it's, it's really something that is beneficial. And I highly suggest to start with that if you're able to go out. The second thing, and I'm so sorry because now I just realized I did not change the number. Uh, it's the hotline, it's the hotline in the UK. But if you are elsewhere, like right now, most of the people are in the US, uh, you can go on uh, Wikipedia, basically. It's, uh, I just did a, a, like a short link, but it's bit, uh, bit.ly, uh, crisis numbers. And basically on Wikipedia, there's a page, you just search for uh, societal crisis line or societal outline or health line, and you're gonna have a list based in your country. But you know, you go on Google, you type whatever your city, because some places they're gonna have like outline specific to the city. Uh, and, and you can talk to them for you. So you can call them for you. And I was, was saying before, based on my experience, you can, call, you can call them if you don't really know what to do with someone that you know, that is having a tough time when it comes to societal thoughts or, or depression overall. And uh, you can also call them to help yourself grieve if something bad happened in your entourage when it comes to uh, suicide. So those are really helpful. Uh, some places that's gonna be like uh, employee, people that are trained to do that. And some other places you're gonna get volunteers. But for me, as an example, to start helping on the crisis line, uh, in Montreal, where I live, I had to do two full weekends of training. So obviously, I was not a professional. That was not my life. That was not what I was doing every day. But I had enough training to be able to help people. And I was always supervised with an employee, which went to university and got a lot more training than me in cases where it was like basically out of my pay grade or I was not able to handle the situation. So there is always a way to call for help. And sometimes, uh, as weird as it may sound, it may be easier to talk about those things with a stranger than talk about a friend because, you know, you don't want your friend to judge you. Uh, you don't want to, your friends to know about what's happening in your life. So someone like a stranger that you may never talk to after, sometimes it's, and it can be easier. Try to disconnect. And I know, especially in tech, we really struggle with that, uh, even more with remote working. Uh, you know, like we have our, our, our work email on our phone. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to check just one last thing. I'm going to finish just one last thing after the kids uh, went to bed. Uh, you know, there's always a reason to be uh, to work. There's always a reason to be connected to the Internet, to be on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, name it. And uh, it, it's not always the best place to be, uh, especially when you're in, 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 uh, not in a good place. Uh, because, yeah, news of the world are being shared. Uh, people are not always nice there. And sometimes you just like, uh, like on Twitter, we say like you do the, 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 the scrolling of Dom or at that, at, of Doom, where you just scroll and scroll, just trying to, you know, you have a FOMO, you want to see what's happening, or you're just trying to get that, that little hype or that little exciting thing that's going to give you that, that, that happiness, uh, that happiness pheromone or, or like, or, totally forget the name now, but uh, you know, that, that feeling that like, you're just going to feel a little bit better. 
But sometimes, as much as it can be a tool when you feel alone, when you don't want to connect with your, your friends in life, it can be a tool to not feel alone, to connect with other people. But I would say it's also good to disconnect, uh, especially when you don't feel really good. I would highly suggest to do that. Uh, I did not do it, and I wish I would have done it because that was nice because I was able to still be connected to the world, but at the same time, uh, it, I think it, it put me down more than, than uh, I think it, it really did not help me. Uh, try to breathe and lie real like Fred, you're stupid. We all breathe and we do this all the time, all day long. But try to do breathing exercise or you know what, even better, uh, try to start to do meditation. And like, if you are ADHD, if you're ADHD, you're like, hey, meditation is the end of the world. I cannot do that. But the thing is that when meditation, the goal is not to stop thinking. The goal is to fix your attention on something, your breath or, or mental image. And the idea is like to notice when your attention goes away and try to bring your attention back. And so you, you, your brain will never stop to think about 10,000 things. And trust me, I meditate. I, I'm, I'm really high in the spectrum of ADHD. My brain never stopped, but I'm getting better at bringing back my attention. And seriously, you don't need to meditate an hour per day. Just five minutes per day is good enough to have like a positive effect. And go online. Uh, there is many websites that will teach you how to meditate or help you with different techniques. So try to find the one that makes sense. Uh, there is a lot of application on, on you know, the, the, the on, on mobile, on the App Store, whatever, or, or Android too, where Google Play, where uh, they're going to help you either guided meditation or with some music. And seriously, there is a lot of benefits. It's kind of like the next step, I would say, after breathing exercise and doesn't prevent you to do both exercise. But what you can do also, I was talking about breathing, just go outside if you can, if you physically and mentally can go outside, go outside and go in nature if you can. It's, it's really the next step. But even if you go outside in a city where there's a lot of pollution, still breathing the air outside, even if there's a lot of pollution, that, that's going to be good because that's going to be quote unquote fresh air. But if you're not in the city or there is nature not too far away from the city, sometimes just going for a walk, uh, going for some hiking, just sitting next to a tree. It's, it's, it's something that's going to be really, really helpful. And on top of that, I don't have uh, really like a slide on that or whatever, but uh, exercising is also a good way to help change your mind and feel better. Uh, unfortunately, it's not something that I did too much, uh, but that was, uh, it's something that many people say, like when they feel down, when they don't feel good, quote unquote, forcing themselves to exercise or to do a sport that they like. So it doesn't mean you need to go to the gym, but uh, it doesn't mean to, do, to be super intense too. Like you can go play, uh, like just, just do badminton in it with friends, like a friendly way where it's not a competition. So it's not like a crazy exercise, but still you move, you change your mind, you focus on other things. It's really beneficial. Music is one of the other tips that is really uh, like, it's, it's people, people don't think about music to help them make them happy, but it's, it's one trick where obviously don't listen to, to music that make you down or make you cry. Try to find someone, something that has, that is energetic, uh, something that you enjoy, something that make you dance and don't be afraid, like close, close, close the, like close, close the view for people, uh, the windows so people can, can see yourself and dance dance in your, your dining room, dance in your room, in your bedroom. Uh, just again, moving, uh, listening to music. Music has a huge impact on human overall. No matter the type of music you listen, just listening to something that brings you joy, really going to help you to, at least for the three minutes and a half long for that song you really like, will put your mind away. You will be able to hopefully feel a little bit better. It doesn't work all the time, but it's one of the tricks that is really, really working. If you're not depressed, because it's really hard, but even if you're depressed, try it. Try to do something fun, something that you like. And this is where being depressed is a little bit difficult on that side, because even the things that you used to like are not enjoy enjoyable at all. But if you're having 
problems if it's uh, even maybe something temporary with what's happening in the world and you really feel down about the situation, just trying to do something you like, uh, even if it's just like a, an activity you do by yourself or an activity you do with people, do something you like, do a hobby you like, go, 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 you enjoy watching a movie, go to the theater, go to the cinema and watch a movie, something that will, that you like, something that I enjoy, something that will help you live a little more in the moment and, and try to kind of like not think too much about what's happening in your life. And, and maybe it was, uh, you've seen like there is a, a cat painting behind me. You may have seen a cat or two in the background, real cat actually. Uh, I'm a little bit of a crazy cat man, but adopting an animal, uh, please don't buy them, adopt them uh, to shelters, adopting an animal that you will take care of. It's really nice. Uh, I can tell you for me, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I'm not hypochondriac, but at the beginning of the pandemic, I freaked out. And I basically went out from my place three times in a year and a half because I was really freaking out. And for a social person like me, it was terrible. Like some of my, my more introvert friends were like, hey, we trained for that all our lives. Uh, but even them, like after like a couple of months, they were like, okay, you know, I need to see people. But for someone who is super social, that was really, really hard for me. And I'm single, I live alone. And it may sound a little bit crazy, but having my cat with me, I only had one cat at that time, really helps me to feel a bit better. It really helps me to not feel alone. It helps me to just be a little more joyful because those those little little animals, they're just they're just joy. They're just like like hopefully they like you you like them so no there, there's that kind of relation you get with them so adopt a, a cat or if you're that kind of person adopt a dog but you probably want to adopt a cat uh seriously that's going to be like it's something uh that really brings joy into your life but obviously do it if you know you're able to take care of those animals so uh the problem with the pandemic is a lot of people adopted animal and now that like we're free to get back to your life uh those poor animals don't really have a home some of them but uh it's another way to really help you to feel a little bit better no matter what's happening if you can afford it uh it's 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 a little bit cheaper than we think but still it costs money and uh you may have health insurance or depending where you live like in the u.s you, you don't have like a, a, um you don't have a lot of things to help you with with uh anything health uh and and mental health but try to see a psychologist you know it's a little bit the equivalent of talking to a stranger someone who basically their job is not to judge you their job is to help you to think those things through. Uh, sometimes just a session will really help you. Sometimes you need recurring session, but there is absolutely nothing wrong. There is absolutely nothing wrong to see a, psychi uh, a psychologist or, or like you call them in the US, a shrink. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong. I know people that feel very well mentally that don't have mental health issues and that see a psychologist once in a while because it's just nice to vent to people it's just nice to exchange with someone else who again is not there to judge you also someone who doesn't have like a lot of background on you at the beginning which is also good because they don't come with like preconceived things about you so do it if you can afford it uh check sometimes at universities you're gonna have like free programs uh where uh like students will become at some point mental health professional uh, can give you a session really affordable or even for free or try to see like uh, locally if there's program that can help you if you cannot afford that but seriously i see one once a week and it's really helpful in me trying to understand what's happening in my life trying to feel a little bit better another tips go see a health professional uh, if you're feeling really sad, if you're feeling bad, if there are things in your life, neurodiversity or mental health issues that are affecting your life and you're like, okay, now I need help, go see a doctor, go see a doctor, talk to them about how you feel. And even if it's not their expertise, they may be able to refer you to the right person who's going to be able to help you, which brings me to the next step. It's totally fine to take medication for no matter the problems you have or the issues you have or the neurodiversity you have 
it is totally fine to take medication. And it's fine to take medication to help you. As an example, I take medication for depression. I take medication for ADHD. And ADHD is probably for the rest of my life. And depression, who knows? But the thing is that those medication help me function every day. And you cannot, it's really hard to, it's really hard to get better if you're not better. So, you know, when you're in a state when it doesn't go well, it's really hard to try to go well because you're not going well. It's kind of like a catch-22 situation. So taking medication would help you to feel a, bit, a little bit better. And yes, that's going to be because of the pill. But when you're going to feel better, you're going to be able to go get help. You're going to be able to work on yourself. You're going to be able to start to live a little more and try to, to yourself get better. And you know what? If it's for the rest of your life that you need to take the pills to feel better, it is so okay, it is fine. So there is no shame about taking pills. And I want to be sure that it's super interesting. Like people understand that there is no shame. It's totally okay to take medication. Last tip I would say, try to please yourself. You know, some people like to take a bath. Uh, some people like to, to get like, like fresh flour on their table. Uh, I don't know, a, a, a gamer uh, like to, to buy a new game to, to just like do, like give yourself a gift. If you can afford it, it doesn't need to be something pricey. It's just like, please yourself with something you like, like give yourself a gift. Like, what do you like? Oh, you like uh, having like a great espresso with a good, like, like, like really nice croissant. Go to the coffee shop, buy, buy yourself one, take the time to appreciate those things. It's one of the other way to try to tell your brain like, hey, you know what? Like, like, can I just enjoy that, that moment? And when you put all those little moments together at some point, hey, maybe your brain's gonna be like, okay, now I can feel a little bit better. And, and it's, it's the stupidest advice I can take, but it's, it's working. Fake it until you make it. You know what, uh, for a while, and, and even sometimes, even today, uh, like people ask me, how, how, you, are you, how are you, Fred? I'm like, I'm really good, I'm super good, life is good. And I would say most of the time, it's not totally true, but you know what? Like by seeing this all the time, like brain can be programmable. Like at some point your brain will start to think it and it's not cheating. Like your brain will start to think it. So you're gonna start to really feel better because your brain is like, no, he's feeling better. So, you know, fake it till you make it. Don't make you sick about that. Don't, don't fake it. If you don't feel you can fake it. It's just, just, one, other, just one other tricks that seems a little bit crazy but can really work. So again, I'm sorry, I swear a lot in English. So uh, I, want, I want to finish the talk by like, like, you know, fuck the mental health taboo and stigmas. And uh, that means that we should be able to talk more about those things. And this is part of like one of the big goal of tonight, that presentation is that it should not be a problem for your career to say that you feel depressed most of the time. Uh, it should not be a problem that people will pity you uh, because uh, you have, uh, you're struggling to, to, to have uh, attention and, and do like the minimum of work that other people uh, like have to do. Uh, like it shouldn't, you should not be afraid that people will stop being your friends or that your family will stop talking to you. But the thing is that it is a little bit too often. So we need to start to think, talk about those things. We need to start to have discussion with people. We need to listen to other people to be sure that at some point, hopefully sooner than later, we won't be scared to talk about that. We won't be judged when we think, when we talk about those things. And I'm lucky enough that I work in a place where they accept that I do those talks. Uh, I'm, I'm really public for a couple of years about my own issues. And uh, obviously I'm pretty sure I miss opportunities for work, but you know what? Uh, for me, that was a red flag. That's good. I, I, I avoid toxic situation. Obviously, you may not be in a situation when you can uh, leave those aside. But again, I'm super annoying with that. But the more we think, the more we talk about those things, the better hopefully it's going to come. But I want you to remember that no matter how you feel, and especially, mostly especially, if, if you don't feel yourself, if you're in a situation when you have mental health issue, if you are in a situation when you feel different from other people, when you feel that, when you feel that life is harder, Never forget, you're the fucking king and the queen of the jungle. Like, like you're doing your best to advance in life. You're doing your best 
to go to the next step. Uh, let's stop to try to keep up, keep up with the Jones and the Joannas. Like, let's just try to live our life. And, and kudos to you if you're able to talk to other people about your demons, about things that are hurting you in life. But go through your own journey the way that makes sense for you. But please ask for help when you feel that you need help. That crap happened all the time. Uh, there was a thread on Twitter not too long ago where someone was like, uh, someone was sharing about their anxiety. And someone replied like, hey, crazy, all, all this crap makes people defending, uh, dependent on doctor and or medicine. Just face your anxiety. Just face your anxiety. I was like, oh my God, you're fucking brilliant. Like you find the solution. I just need to face my anxiety to not be anxious anymore. But that kind of crap is why people are afraid to talk about that. And I can take that, but some other people, and again, it's not because I'm better, it's just because I'm like, like I'm, I'm starting to get used to that, which is not a good thing, but I'm starting to get used to that. But that can prevent a lot of people to not talk about their issues. And for some people that may not be the end of the world, but for some people that may be the end of their own journey, the end of their life. And there was like, at the time I took the screenshot, 46 people that was like, yeah, that's brilliant. This is they're like, it makes sense what you just said. So I want, us to stop having those kind of like stupid reply like this and replying this to people and of course we can argue about the pharmaceutical industry uh they do a lot of bad things they charge way too much for like medicine that are uh important for the survival of many people but in the end of the day medication is also helping a lot of people so let's not try to put the pharma pharmaceutical, I don't know why I struggle with that one in English, pharmaceutical industry ruining every other good things that those medication does to help people live their life. Uh, my example is always like, hey, would you tell someone who uh, broke their, their leg? Uh, you know what? You should just walk on your leg like, like you don't need, you don't need anything, you don't need support. Like, why? Like, like stop that. And you just need to face the fact that your leg is broken. Just walk on it. Like, no, nobody, nobody will tell you that. Same thing as, you know, someone taking medication. Uh, I've been told a couple of times, like, oh, yeah, but it's really sad, Fred, that you need medication to function in life. I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, would you tell someone who wear glasses? Like, it's really sad you need glasses to be able to view things in life. No. We tell someone like, you should just stop to wear glasses. Like, like, no, why? Because it's visual, because people understand that. People don't really understand all the time mental health. So I really would like people to stop thinking about mental health as something different. For me, mental health is basically physical health. So if you're not ready to tell someone to wear glasses, that you should stop to wear glasses because they're just giving money to the glasses industry. And, and, and like the, 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 the people like doing the tests and all those things. And that they should just like face the fact that they have vision issues. Don't say the same bullshit to people that have mental health. Another taboo uh, is that boys don't get sad. You know, uh, I'm, I'm from the generation where, you know, men needs to be strong, maybe not as much as like the previous generation, but still, you know, I'm a man, I should not cry. Like a man is tough, like, like it's my masculinity. That is another bullshit. Like men can get sad and, 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 and actually we get sad and, and we have issues, but most of us are afraid to talk about that. And when I say that, I include myself. It really took me time to be honest with the people around me about the fact that I was not going well. And when I say people around me, I'm saying my best friend. I've been friend with I don't know now, maybe 25 years out of like 40 years of life, which like I can tell that person everything. And I really struggle because of like, nah, like me. And this is actually like the feedback that I got from some people. You know, when I started to go back to conferences, people were like, oh yeah, it's been a while we didn't see you, Fred. I'm like, yeah, got depressed, uh, literally didn't make it. And people were like, like you? And I was like, fuck yeah, me. Like, yeah, me. Like I, I know I, I had a great job. I was in a relationship that everybody was like, oh, you're so beautiful together. And I was making money and I was like, life was good. Like, but was life was not that good. And people were like, oh, but you? I like you, yeah, it can be everyone, including men. So 
that was not a difficult that actually I was going to say that was not a difficult topic. That was a difficult topic. Uh, I really want to thank you uh, for listening to that topic to be open enough to be here and listening about listening about those difficult words, those hard words, those those words that we don't want to hear about. Because again, that's the beginning of something. And it was not easy. Maybe you fell down a little bit during the presentation. Maybe you had to quit, but the world did not explode. We're still here, most of us. I, I assume even tonight, everyone. So it's just to show that like we can talk about those topics and it's not the end of the world. And that's not gonna be easy, but those things happen. And I'm really, I'm really not good at math. So I'm gonna tell you one plus one equal, equal infinity. Because for me, if I can touch one more person with that talk and that person will talk to someone else or that person would help someone else, that do a dominoes effect. So we need to talk about those topics. Talk about them, share about them if you can. Don't force yourself if you're not in the space where you're not able to do that, where you don't feel comfortable to do that. But the more we talk about them, the less taboo they're gonna get and the better hopefully people will be and more confident they will be to talk about those topics. So I'm asking you for real, how are you? How do you feel? And on that note, that's my big face without the beard and one of my baby, one of my cat. Uh, I can take questions if some people have some question. If you don't feel comfortable to take questions or to talk about that topic right now, uh, this is my personal email. Hi at fred.dev. Yes, that's my email. You can contact me on Twitter. Uh, I'm there way too often during the day. Uh, you can also schedule coffee chat. I didn't put the link, but if you go on Twitter, that is the the pin tweet that I have where you can schedule like a 30 minute video call with me. We can talk about anything, but also we can talk about mental health. And if it's really not going well, please reach out to me. I cannot understand everything that is happening in your life because we all live those things differently, but I've been in a really shitty, shitty situation and I'm there to, even if you vent to someone or at least show you the right resources for you and be there to help you. So on that note, I see some hands that are being raised. So let me change my screen. Let me stop that. Uh,